Today I am going to talk about Shine by Lauren Miracle. Uh, this cover is very interesting. Um, it's, you know, different than what we're getting on most young adult books lately these days. Um, we kind of see a r rural, rural landscape here. Um, no houses, no anything. Um, the um, story takes place um, in a very small town, so um, that can explain the cover here. Because I did always wonder why this cover was chosen, even though it's beautiful. I was like, um, how does this really rep represent the story? But it really does, um, in a way. So on the back here, we just have quotes, um, blurbs for other authors. Um... It says, Lauren Miracle's Shine is a remarkable novel. It shows how a town can harbor something so vile that when the secret is broken and a light shone into the corners, the effects can devastate the guilty and the innocent. And that is from the author of um, Terry Lesseni, author of the Goddess of YA Literature blog. Okay, so... Um, this cover fits very tight on the book. It's, I mean, even when I go like this, it's really hard to get off. So I, I thought that was awesome. Very tight fitting cover. We've got black inside, um, green outside. And um, the flap here says, A boy beaten, bound, and left for dead. Words of hate scrawled across his chest. A girl shrinking from life, enslaved by a shameful secret. A tight-knit southern community riddled by poverty, clannishness, drugs, and intolerance. When Patrick is found near death, strung to the pump of a local gas station, 16-year-old Kat emerges from her self-imposed exile to average the horrors inflicted on the, her former best friend. The local sheriff is ready to pin the, the crime on gay bashing out-of-towners, but Kat's suspicions lie elsewhere. Despite ominous warnings to leave it be, Kat finds the will fueled by a fury born of an old injustice to expose the hometown, homegrown hatred that gave rise to Patrick's attack. Best-selling author Lauren Miracle has crafted a hypnotic mystery steeped in a sense of place that is also a searing coming-of-age story, an exploration of loss, guilt, and fear fused inseparably with a tale of courage, resiliency, and love. So this was a, definitely a kind of a heavy read for me. Um, I, I think Lauren Miracle's writing is fantastic. Um, but, I mean, you know, talk about uh, a very sad story um, going on here. Um, no picture of the author there. And the chapters all have this um, design on them, which I thought was pretty cool. I do always love the little extras that go into printing the book. Um, it's just so nice to have a little bit extra. We also get to have these um, black and white photos thrown um, to separate the days. Um, so Kat, um, yeah, she's kind of a, a loner. She's separating, she has separated herself, um, f from everybody else. Her friends have kind of gone in different directions than she has. Um, they haven't really graduated high school. They are dropouts. They're just not interested. Um, they live in a really small rural, rural town. Sorry about that. But it is um, surrounded by college towns. So the gas station in particular gets, um, you know, several customers uh, from the college um, kids passing by, by the freeway and whatnot. And um, so, of course, they're the first to be suspected. It says, Bloody Sunday, teen brutally attacked. Stunned residents of Black Creek, North Carolina, pray for 17-year-old Patrick Truman, beaten and left for dead outside the convenience store where he works. There was blood in his hair, blood on his face, blood everywhere, says Dave Tuttle, the motorist who discovered the unconscious teen early Sunday morning. Tuttle was driving from Atlanta to his ha mountain house in Tuckaway, North Carolina, when he pulled off of the single-lane highway to refuel. Stopping at the come-and-go has become a tradition, a shaken Tuttle 
told the Pulse. They sell boiled peanuts and homemade jam, sometimes fresh cobblers. It's a reminder of simpler times. Simpler times, which apparently aren't so simple after all. Truman, who worked the closing shift the previous night, was scheduled to open the store at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. When Tuttle pulled up to the store single pump at 7.30, he found Truman slumped on the pavement, bound to the guardrail of the fuel dispenser. The gasoline nozzle protruded from his mouth, held in a place with duct tape. Across the teen's bare chest, scrawled in blood, were the words, Suck this faggot. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty rough like that all the way through the book. Um, very, um, some very intense moments. Um, we see a very small town that has alcoholics, drug addicts, um, uh, uh, you know, um, some very small-minded people and some very open-minded people. Um, so Kat takes it upon herself to go through the town and starts asking questions. And they are, there are some people that, um, you know, answer her questions freely. And there are some that tell her to stop putting her nose where it doesn't belong and become very angry with her um, for trying to figure out what is going on or what happened to her friend. So, um, very intense read. Uh, we get, like I said, we get to see a variety of different people in this book. Um, you know, one step will lead Kat into a different direction. She, um, you know, just the whole concept of drugs is really heavily, um, in, in, into this book. I mean, um, uh, there is a teensy, eensy bit of a sex scene in here. Nothing too big. Um, uh, mostly drugs and, uh, bad words. Um, a lot of cursing. Um, so, um, I mean, I, I really did enjoy the writing style, um, this more contemporary, um, heavy tone of the book. Um, I wasn't really expecting, but when you read that flap, I don't know why I wouldn't have expected anything less, um, or more. So, um, either way, I mean, the flap really does say what the story's about, and it's, and, I mean, for the first, um, two pages here where I was reading from the, um, news article, um, really explains it all, and it's a lead into the story, so you know exactly what you're going to expect, so, um, um, you know, so she's out to figure out if this is a hate crime or not, and she discovers several interesting and sad facts about her town, and the people in it, um, some old friends, um, and who she thought was family and friends. So, uh, that Shine by Lauren Miracle, I know it wasn't much. I don't want to go into too, too much detail, of course, because um, I don't want to hint to what might have happened. So, um, uh, like I said, it was a heavy read. Um, maybe um, not so much quite a, a summertime read, but if you are more into that, um, it was very interesting to say, um, you know, I don't know. It, it was, I don't know exactly the words to find for this one. Um, I would recommend it to certain people that don't mind the heaviness of a book like this. Um, I, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it at all. So, um, there's Shine by Lauren Miracle. And, um, you should check it out if anything I said sounds interesting. And thanks for watching. Bye.